Now it's time for a look at central digital bank currencies, otherwise known as CBDCs, which exist in the broader digital currency universe that also includes cryptocurrencies and stable coins. Can you follow this? Great. So what makes CBDCs so interesting? Well, cryptocurrencies and stable coins are not issued by a central bank and as a result are not legal tender. I'm just about following you. Uh, by comparison, CBDCs are essentially the digital form of cash and are regulated by the monetary authority of a country or region, typically the central bank. Importantly, they're operated and settled in a person-to-person -person and decentralised manner rather than through an intermediary. Well, as talks of a digital euro heat up, I spoke earlier to Dr Stefan Hoops. Now, he heads the corporate bank at Deutsche Bank, and we looked at the potential of these digital currencies. So, Stefan, it's really good to see you. Now, I know the subject we're going to be talking about is one which you feel quite passionately about. In fact, you addressed it at the Digital Euro Summit on the 15th of September. So we're really going to develop some of the themes which came out of that. But look, whenever you talk about CBDCs, you can't really avoid the comparison with cryptocurrencies and stable coins. So from your perspective, why is it that the idea of CBDCs is moving into the centre of the mainstream conversation? And what is it about the market that has actually changed to facilitate this? Good question, Juliet. Look, to some extent, I will say that with all the respect, it's the first time that central banks are actually in competition. So previously, central banks obviously observed other central banks, but they had monetary sovereignty in their respective area. And for the first time, that may change. And when you think about what DM, so the Libra now called DM uh, discussion uh, initiated a couple of years ago, was essentially the idea that you could simply have a stable coin that would gain acceptance by the population in a certain region. And I think, you know, to give credit to, to Facebook, that really sparked that discussion amongst central banks, which I think is really important. Now, what has happened recently is that the central banks, um, let's just look at the ECB, is also from a geopolitical perspective, potentially in competition with other central banks, because you know, it will be difficult to pay in dollars if you try to try to buy bread in Germany, but you, know, you could potentially pay with the digital dollar if it exists. So again, I think really coming back to the idea of, of monetary sovereignty in your region, um, I think that was essentially the, well, the, the kickoff of why it has gained so much traction. Now, I think we're still a couple of years away from it. So the attraction is really one in terms of discussions, a lot of interaction with, um, with experts, with, with clients, uh, potential clients and so on. So we're still a couple of years ahead, uh, away from it, but I think it's really good to see the level of interest and the level of discussions. And let's stay with this idea about the level of interest, because we know that China has already started examining an ECNY. And at the same time, you've now got talk ramping up about the digital euro. So from your perspective as a banker, do you see the development of a CBDC in Europe as a tremendous opportunity or on the flip, the flip side, a potential threat? Because it's one of those things which does divide opinion. I'll be honest, I think if that's the question I was asking, I think I would be missing the point because it's not really about us as banks and whether it's a threat or opportunity for us. I think the right question is like, what does it mean for the people using it? So what are the use cases? How do consumers think about it? How do corporates think about it? And then we can think about what function we fulfill. So when you take a step back and think about what us banks do, we do fairly basic functions. I mean, we store value, um, we transfer value from you know, maybe money into you know, buying a new sweater or a, you know, a bread, um, and we allow value to time travel because we allow you to actually consume something today and promise to repay tomorrow, which obviously is called loan or mortgage. So those are the fairly basic functions that we fulfill. Now, my thesis would be that that ain't going to change. So I think that also in you know, 10 years, 20 years, 100 years, that function of I worked, I have a salary, I want to preserve the value of, of my work, and therefore I want to store it somewhere, that you will always have. I think what us banks therefore have to do 
is to really understand in a potential new ecosystem, which you know, will be one for sure of, of digital assets, digital currencies, like those functions that we provide to clients, what will be the essentially the application of it or like the, the version of it in the future ecosystem? But what are the hurdles that remain for CBDC to actually gain wide acceptance and more broadly in Europe specifically? So at this stage, um, that is complex from the perspective of the various CBDC initiatives being at pretty different stages, right? So therefore, um, let me just answer it for Europe because that was essentially the second part of your question. I think we have to agree who we do it for, what it can be used for, and then how it can be consumed. So is it just for retail, or for consumers, or is it also for corporates? Is it for the securities market? The, what is it used for? You know, will there be a limit? Right? Will it be 3,000 euros per person, which could be the right answer? But they would obviously limit the, uh, the use cases for it. So therefore, the, probably the, the best way to think about it is, what is the use case? Therefore, what is the design? And then what is the technology needed? Right, but given what you've just outlined, what do you see as the role of the banks in this new digital ecosystem? Well, really continuing to be the intermediary between the central bank and the clients. Right? Arguably, and you can add fintechs that in many cases have really good channels through which clients will consume financial products. But I think we'll continue to be an intermediary. I think we will continue to provide credit the central bank is not in the business of actually lending to anybody. So I think that's something that we will continue to do. Um, I think we'll continue to do the KYC, the monitoring essentially on you know, behalf of the authorities. I mean, so the, those functions that us banks fulfill, that will continue. Now, I think really near term, what we should spend time on is tokenized deposits. When you think about, um, you know, without trying to sound like, in, uh, like a professor for Economy, which unfortunately I've never become because uh, after my PhD, I, I chose to become a banker. Um, but when you think about what central banks do, I mean, they have cash, which is really the central bank version. And then when you give it to a bank, it becomes a deposit, a, a bank deposit, which is insured. And that is a really, really important feature. Now, what we could do is to actually tokenize those bank deposits, which means they would be insured, they would be credible, trusted, and that is something which we can do while we wait for the ultimate uh, design of a digital euro. Okay, Stefan Hoops, we're going to leave it there, but thank you so much for taking us through that journey that Deutsche Bank has embarked upon. Good luck with it going forward into the future and also enjoy Cybos 2021. Thank you so much. I will. Thank you very much.